In season five of The Wire, Gus, a newspaper editor, says this. If you can describe him as he really is, tell his story in moments, get back in the shelters and the soup kitchens, and just be with folk. Just spend the day being with people. I'm not interested in what can be quoted or countered on this. I'm interested in what feels true. This is an ethos that The Wire takes to heart and uses to develop its themes and ideas. As I laid out in part one of this series on The Wire, show creators David Simon and Ed Burns had intentions for the show that went far beyond creating entertainment. They were interested in what feels true, and they used moments to examine and develop their themes. Drama in small moments like that. In this video, I'm going to show how The Wire uses narrative structure and the juxtaposition and relationship of scenes and characters to illustrate ideas. To show this, I'll have to spoil aspects of the show. If you haven't seen the show yet and you'd like a spoiler-free overview of why it's great, make sure to watch part one in this series. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. You can go to nordvpn.com slash thomasflight to get 75% off a three-year plan. The Wire deals with many issues, but its primary focus is illustrating the city of Baltimore by showing its various institutions and the individuals that make up those institutions. The show portrays how economic, political, and individual motivations affect how institutions operate. Key to the story is how these motivations keep the institutions in a cycle of failure and make it difficult for individuals to reform. Are you in any way suggesting that the system's lost control of the school? No, 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 that's not what I'm suggesting no, at all. This is fine. System's great. I mean, this isn't about the system. But how do you lay out these ideas on film? How do you portray them without beating your audience over the head with preachy, complicated exposition? One way is to use the technique that Gus describes. You show individual moments and use the relationship between those moments in different characters' lives to infer certain ideas. Here's an example. Early in season two, there are two scenes that mirror each other visually and in content. Stringer Bell and Avon Barksdale communicate through the chain link fence of a prison. Listen, Brianna reminded me, man, we got promises we got to keep. I know, I heard. Daniels and McNulty communicate through the chain link barrier of the evidence room. We brought in the case at least. Heard you on the boat. The conversations in the two scenes are different in how they relate to the story, but taken together the scenes illustrate the dysfunction of the police department, who is punishing the officers that successfully arrested Avon Barksdale, even as they punish Avon Barksdale. And none of this is in exposition, The Wire doesn't tell you this, it simply lets you see it through context and the visual connection. Through these kinds of associations, the show creates the city of Baltimore as a character. Each institution and character touches every other in some way. I take any mo money if he's giving it away now. <laughs> Corner kids will take money that's being given away, just like Clay Davis. I'll take any money if he's giving it away. Clay Davis is told he shouldn't flip and needs to carry the charge against him. Or you carry this for all of us. Carry it as far as you can. Just like D'Angelo is told the same thing. But you hurt him. You hurt this whole family. D'Angelo is scolded for being unloyal to his family, just like Carver is scolded for being unloyal to his police unit. You show loyalty. They learn loyalty. You show them it's about the work, it'll be about the work. Carver is scolded by Lieutenant Daniels for going outside the chain of command, while Carchetti later thanks Daniels for doing the same thing. Well, thanks for going outside the chain of command. Carchetti is trying to do politics differently, but struggles against the cons of Clay Davis. So much for laying back on the mayor. We paid $20,000 for this? He probably went to Royce and shook him down for another 30. Just like Stringer Bell does when trying to reform his drug empire. Now I'm talking about 30,000 coming back, man. I'm talking about the quarter of a mil that you took. Now you need to call Mr. Goose, Mr. Fawcett, whoever you got to call because I gave you money to run. Remember that? Stringer Bell is punished by his institution for that very attempt to reform. Well, get on with it, mother. Just like Bunny Colvin is punished for his attempt to reform. Not much you can say, is there? Not the real police. Get on with it, mother. Colvin reaches for a harebrained illegal scheme to try to force reform when all else fails. Thought I might legalize drugs which is mirrored by McNulty's harebrained illegal scheme to inspire change in season five. There's a serial killer in Baltimore. He preys on the weakest among us. He needs to be caught. 
McNulty's actions in season 5 lead to him losing what he loves, police work, just like Marlowe's mistakes lead to him losing what he loves, his crown. You understand? Give up the crown. Even though Marlowe tries to reform, he's drawn back to the streets, just like Avon Barksdale was drawn back after attempting to reform. Yeah, I ain't no suit wearing businessman like you. You know, I'm just a gangster, I suppose. Avon Barksdale is more interested in sending a message than in effectiveness. When the work hard, this boy Marlo punking me, what am I look like? Just like police commissioner Burrell. We need to let them know who we are. We can't for one minute let them think that this will stand. And this is just a fraction of the ways that characters and moments are interconnected on the wire. I think you need a lot of context to seriously examine anything. These connections provide some of the context necessary to seriously examine the issues. Separate individuals are also used to tell aspects of a broader, more general story. A great example of this is D'Angelo and Cuddy. D'Angelo is on a path to reform, but he's killed before he has time to complete his arc. Killing off D'Angelo is necessary to illustrate the forces that keep reform from happening. But what if he had made it out of prison alive? What would that have looked like? You put it behind you, huh? Some can. The Wire provides us with Dennis Wise, who illustrates what D'Angelo's path might have looked like had he lived. There's an amazing amount of nuance that's available with this type of storytelling. It's one of the ways The Wire balances precariously on the edge of cynicism and hope. Seeing D'Angelo die is heartbreaking. Getting to see Cuddy successfully reform provides a ray of hope. But even then, the struggles of reforming are made very clear. Another example of this are characters Jimmy McNulty and Kima Greggs. We meet McNulty in season one as a talented but dysfunctional detective. He has a drinking problem, has trouble keeping a relationship together, and is jaded by his career. Kima's arc over the entire show and the similarities to Jimmy's helps illustrate how Jimmy may have ended up the way he was in season one. By doing this, The Wire tells the individual stories of Jimmy McNulty and Kima Greggs, but it's also telling the broader story of the jaded dysfunctional detective. It tells the individual story of D'Angelo Barksdale and Cuddy Wise, but it also tells the broader story of Reformed Gangster. It tells the individual story of Michael and Omar Little, and the broader story of Stick Up Man. Ultimately, the stories of the kids in seasons four and five are the largest piece of this inter-character narrative. By showing each kid's struggles and what leads them to their final destinations, we see how characters like Omar, Bubbles, and Bunny Colvin may have come to be. It allows us to connect the failure of the school system to the dysfunction of the institutions in seasons one through three. But the show isn't so deterministic as to say that the individual adhering to the broader story is inevitable. Through great effort and a little luck, some individuals can break through the cycle and behave differently. Unfortunately though, it often takes great trauma to inspire an individual to reform. This is The Wire's call for individual reform, but it's also perhaps an insinuation that similarly true reform for institutions may only come through trauma to the institution. Understanding this broader narrative about institutions helps us understand why a character like Omar is so compelling in the world of the show. In a world where so many characters are bound or hobbled by failing institutions around them, a true rogue, a lone rebel, is someone we can root for. But all this is left for the audience to extrapolate for themselves from individual moments which keeps the show from feeling like it's shoving a message down your throat. There are layers to unravel and depths to examine and interpret, but the show allows you to use your worldview to see the issues it's laying out, even as it might challenge your own assumptions and worldview and present its own. In the final part of this series, I'll be examining more layers of The Onion and showing why each season of The Wire is important to the overall story. So if you're interested in that, subscribe and hit the bell so you see the next part when it's released. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. You can go to nordvpn.com slash thomasflight to get 75% off a three-year plan.
Everyone should have access to a VPN. It's an important part of basic good security as an internet user. A lot of people don't realize that when you connect to public Wi-Fi, whether it's with your laptop or your phone, you're often exposed to hacking or security risks. When you use a VPN like NordVPN, your connection is encrypted and other people on that public network can't access your data. I love being able to promote NordVPN because it's a company I was using and paying for long before they ever sponsored me and I continue using it to this day. They have thousands of super fast servers in a ton of different countries. They have great apps for iOS and Android that make it really easy to connect to the VPN on your phone. You can get 75% off a three year plan and use code THOMASFLIGHT to get an extra month for free. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want, you can go to patreon.com slash thomasflight to help support the ongoing creation of this type of content. I really appreciate all my patrons and I'll talk to you again next time.